Hello to everyone. Thank you for the invitation. I'm going to talk about frontal fibrosing alopecia. I'm Kira Starace from University of Bologna. Frontal fibrosing alopecia is classified in cicatricial or scarring alopecia, where we can have two types of cicatricial alopecia. The primary, where the inflammation is directed to a, a damage in the target of the inflammation, or a secondary, where the inflammatory disease is due to a secondary event that induces the destruction of the bulb. In both cases, uh, the inflammation is uh, always uh, in the site uh, where is the presence of the bulge, and it is very important because the destruction of this site induces uh, a cicatricial alopecia. There are a lot of causes of secondary cicatricial alopecia, but uh, frontal fibrosing alopecia is classified in the primary cicatricial alopecia. And in this case, this type of cicatricial is classified on the basis of the predominant cell type in the inflammatory infiltrate, lymphatic, lymphocytic, neutrophilic, mixed and non-specific. In general, primary cicatricial alopecia um, have um, a low percentage of uh, uh, frequency and usually the lymphocytic, the ratio of lymphocytic to neutrophilic or mixed is 4 to 1 and male to female ratio different depending on the, sub, on the subtypes. Um, usually we arrive very late on the diagnosis of cicatricial alopecia, almost one year before the patient starts to consult a dermatologist. It's very important to suspect a cicatricial alopecia when you have uh, on clinical examination and then on trichoscopy the absence of the follicular ostia. And uh, on the basis of the site of the location of the disease, you can have the suspect of a specific cicatricial alopecia. In case of frontal fibrosing alopecia, we can suspect it when we have the involvement of the frontal airline. In all the cases, when you suspect a cicatricial alopecia, it is uh, um, advised to perform skin biopsy. And uh, it's important to select the right place where you have to perform it because if you uh, take the place where there is only a cicatricial, it is impossible to know the typical infiltrate. But in uh, frontal fibrosis alopecia, you have to suspect when you see the typical activity of the disease, as in this case where there is uh, the most expressed aspect of the infiltrate and so the activity of the frontal fibrosing alopecia. So um, frontal fibrosing alopecia is classified in the primary together with lichen planopilaris, that is the most frequent, discoid lupus erythematosus, folliculitis decalvans and erosive pustular dermatosis. The um, lichen planopilaris and frontal fibrosis alopecia are classified as variant of lichen planopilaris. And you can see the different variant of the LPP. Uh, one of these is the frontal fibrosis alopecia and another variant of FFA. This is in a pattern distribution. In general, we have this typical aspect of, um, of FFA with a progressive recession of the frontal temporal hairline. It's very, very typical of these, uh, um, of these patients. And also together with the absence of the velus hair and intermediate hair, very, very typical if you want to suspect it. Another possibility in severe form is the skin atrophy with evident frontal and temporal veins. And this typical aspect resembling uh, usually the typical doll hair. Uh, very, very, very nice, uh, this, uh, um, this aspect uh, typical of the airline of the doll. In general, FFA is a scarring alopecia of the marginal scalp, but uh, it is possible to have the involvement of the A brown and A lashes, any other part of the body. Uh, fortunately rarer than the, the typical uh, other part. Female are more affected than male and usually after the menopause. Uh, today we can uh, say that uh, 
the prevalence of the FFA rapidly increased worldwide and a lot of paper started to, to publish it on the literature about uh, the very big number of the patient, especially female, affected by FFA. Um, it is uh, classified as a variant of lichen plano pilaris with the inflammatory infiltrate targeting the intermediate and vellus follicles. And for this reason, we can suspect it when this type of hair completely disappeared. Maybe it is possible to find a trigger event before the onset of the disease, for example, lifting or hair transplantation, but not always. It's impossible to have. Clinical features is characterized, um, are characterized by a band of scarring alopecia of the frontotemporal attachment. The skin is, uh, um, is white, is uh, less color than the other part of the face because there is, there, the, there is the absence of the photoaging sign. And also we have the absence of vellus and intermediate hairs. Another uh, a possibility to classify the severity of the FFA is to uh, measure the typical aspect of the recession uh, in compare with the, the distance between the glabella and the air margin. And usually in FFA it is possible to have uh, in severe grade, degree the distance between the glabella and the hair margin may reach 9 to 10 cm. For this reason, we classify the FFA in four degrees. When the recession is less than one centimeter in the first grade. When the recession is uh, one to three centimeter, the second grade. In the uh, third degree, we have a recession until five centimeter and the distance with glabella and hairline can be uh, 8.7 centimeter. And finally, we have the fourth degree with the recession until 7 cm and the distance between glabella and hairline can uh, be 10 cm. But uh, don't forget that the severity does not correlate with the time of the onset of the disease. Another possible aspect is the clown pattern, where we have the involvement also of the frontal line but also the parietal and in, in other time it's possible to have the occipital. Many, um, it is frequent to have uh, also the involvement of the A browns and less rarely the A lashes. And rarer, more uh, um, rarer than the other part, it's possible to have the involvement of the body hair, for example, the arm. Another clinical aspect can be present is the presence of purple, facial purples. Very, very typical. It's important because uh, usually we have this aspect in an early form, in the early uh, aspect of FFA. How to diagnose this FFA? Two uh, approach. The first approach is always the trichoscopy. And usually with the clinical aspect, we can be sure most time about the diagnosis. But in an early phase, it's possible to request also skin biopsy, to be sure. Trichoscopy is very typical of cicatricial alopecia. And the, the, the presence of sign, of a dermoscopic sign, is important also not, not only to diagnose the disease, but also to be sure the activity of the disease. It's always present the absence of follicular ostia because it is typical of all cicatricial alopecia. And the presence of perifollicular hyperkeratosis, erythema, it's in pili is typical of activity, of the active phase of the disease. The absence of vellus hair is in the early phases and then lonely hair in the late stage of the disease. Don't forget, if you want to see the activity and so the presence of perifollicular hyperkeratosis, not use water or any liquid as an interface. Use always a dry dermoscopy to be sure uh, to see the typical activity, as you can see in these pictures. You can see here this, uh, uh, this, uh, sorry, this perifollicular hyperkeratosis all around the emergence of the follicular of the hair. This is an example of the absence of the follicular ostia. You can see the typical 
terminal here and direct the absence. We not have the typical attachment, so the presence of velus hair, intermediate hair, and then terminal hair. And this is another aspect. You can see here with the sign of erythema, uh, you can see the typical vascular pattern visible because the skin in FFA is uh, thinner than the usual. And then we have also the, uh, the perifollicular hyperkeratosis in some hair. You can see here the typical absence of the hair in severe cases and lonely hair because we have a late stage. Follicular hyperkeratosis is very important to select the therapy because the presence of this aspect indicates the activity of the disease. And this you can see another example. And you can select the therapy on the basis of this sign and the severity of this sign. Maybe you can select a topical, intralesional or um, systemic therapy. Another sign of the activity is the presence of pili torti. Pili torti is uh, the typical torturous aspect of the hair during the emerging from the, from the, um, the skin. And this is due to the inflammation all around that is typical of this disease, the all around the isthmus and all around the follicular unit. And this is another example. The lonely hair is late, is late, is um, a sign of a late stage of FFA. Histopathology usually is not necessary because uh, the clinical aspect and retroscopy gives enough, uh, um, eliminate any doubt about the diagnosis. But in early cases, in early phases of, the, uh, of FFA, it's difficult sometimes only with uh, these two uh, aspects to be sure the diagnosis. This is a history of a female that reported this recession, but it's not so evident because the value cell, you can see, is, they are present and they also reported a, um, a reduce of the hair browns. So we move with the, with the trichoscopy, you can see the terminal and here a lot of values here and moreover uh, some uh, antifollicles. She reported also itching uh, in this side of the scalp. We move to Hey Brown, you can see some black dot here. She denied any trauma and then he removed um, the Hey Browns. So we decide to perform biopsy. And here you can see always with dermoscopy guide the technique. And um, at the end, the histopathology confirm, confirm the presence of FFA with a typical um, lymphocytic infiltrate, you can see in a diffuse, and but also very in uh, near the typical uh, follicular unit, very, very typical in FFA. The therapy is uh, always, um, today we have a lot of paper that start to uh, review the therapy and give some information about the use, but uh, until now we have uh, some steps to follow. First of all, we can select the typical uh, first line therapy that is steroid therapy as in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, this lymphocytic uh, cicatricial alopecia uh, where the steroid is the first. You can select the topical steroid, the intralesional steroid or systemic steroid, um, always in active form, in severe form. Um, then, uh, if you have not an answer to steroid, you can select the use of hydroxychloroquine. chloroquine. Then uh, you can start to, in, um, in initial form, you can start direct also with the use of minoxidil with the topical or oral minoxidil. In this review, uh, the authors, uh, very, in a very um, nice uh, way, they review all the systemic therapy, uh, all the type of therapy in FFA, and they at the end create an, an algorithm, as you can see here, when the first choice always is uh, the, uh, the steroid in the different way on the basis of the activity of the disease. And then you can start directly with also the use of minoxidil to try to, um, to reduce the number of uh, miniaturization. In, uh, in, um, in, uh, when you have not an improvement, you can select hydroxychloroquine. 
and you can start with the different therapy when you have an improvement with the, the, the last therapy. Then you can use the physical therapies. There are some uh, controversial about the use of PRP, about the use of lasers, and then the transplantation to try to, um, uh, to reduce the typical uh, empty space of this part of the patient with FFA. Don't forget that uh, um, FFA may progress despite treatment in a slow way. And it's possible to have a, a generalized aspect and some um, and affect the scalp, even in the clinical silent areas. So when you visit the patient, don't forget to look at not only in the site of the affect area, but also in the other part of the scalp, because it's possible to have in the other side where usually you don't expect to have. And for this reason, there is this, uh, um, a variant of FFA in a pattern distribution, where it is, um, there is always an a lymphatic, a lymphocytic um, infiltrate, but not in a marginal area, but in a diffuse way in the typical area of androgenetic alopecia or female pattern hair loss. Histopathology confirmed because in this case, if it's a rare case, difficult to diagnose, it's always to perform biopsy in this case. And you can see the typical lichenoid infiltrate with the association of miniaturization. And the history of the patient report itching, itch that not resolved with anything. Uh, usually, the clinical presentation of this uh, fibrosing alopecia and pattern distribution is the hair loss in a central parietal distribution with dysesthesia, with itching, um, pain, and a slow progression um, of the disease. Uh, you can see in the, uh, the, the typical uh, alteration in the clinical, we have this uh, concentrate on the central part of the scalp. Then you move to trichoscopy, and in trichoscopy, you can see the typical aspect of, uh, of a cicatricial of a FFA, the erythema, then the aspect typical of the absence of follicular ostia, then again, the typical perifollicular in um, hyperkeratosis, and finally, the white area. Very, very typical, but not in a distribution, central distribution, but, sorry, not in a marginal distribution, but typical in the androgen uh, area, dependent area, so in the very uh, central part of the scalp, where there is also the association of miniaturized hair that is very typical. In other paper, Greeks uh, collect a lot of cases and they, um, they propose a diagnostic criteria of fibrosing alopecia and a pattern distribution where there is a major criteria and minor criteria. In general, on the therapy of this uh, variant of FFA is always the systemic steroid. That, uh, fortunately, it, it, they are affected in 40% 40 40 of cases. And then the second choice, also in this case, uh, hydroxychloroquine. You can use uh, direct, in this case, uh, the association of minoxidil or oral minoxidil because there is uh, always the presence of miniaturized hair. And this is my last slide, and I thank you for your attention.